Now, regarding that story about the sentencing of Nigeria's former Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwere Madu to a 10-year prison term by a court in London, we're now being joined by a RISE correspondent, Lakbe Olarinoye, live from London. Hi, Lakbe. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on Newsday. Could you give us uh, a, more of an update? Uh, what else do we know about uh, this sentencing? Well, as you can imagine, if it's been a long day at, for many of the people involved in this. Uh, it started here at the Old Bailey Central mark. Criminal Court at about 10 a.m. this morning. The ruling, or the verdict, table. should I say, wasn't given to just and about 20 here, minutes ago, where the judge who uh, that said that this, this crime was uh, a, a heavily punishable and crime um, and stated the account area. of what each of the defendants did, and of course, that ruling has Secondly, come out to be that Dr. Obina Obeta, who's been described as a medical middleman for facilitating the travel of uh, this young man who they're naming as David uh, to the UK to harvest his organ. The doctor has been given a, a sentence of 10 years and six months, of which he will serve two thirds of that. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ekwere Madu, on the other hand, have also had the highest level of culpability uh, stated in that ruling, and they have been sentenced to, respectively, nine years and eight months for the senator, and of course for his wife, four years and six months, of which both, they will both serve two, uh, two thirds of that. Now, the judge did take into consideration a lot of the references, particularly from the Nigerian uh, political space that have been pouring in within the last week. Uh, and he has taken those character references into consideration for Mr. Ekwere Madu, which is why he gave him that nine year and eight month sentence instead of the 10 year custodial that he intended on doing. For Mrs. Beatrice Ekwere Madu, the character references again were taken into consideration, but this time around, the huge factor was the presence of uh, as a mother for her daughter, her dying daughter, who, by the way, is at the center of this case and is still living with a uh, kidney failure. And she still hasn't, by the way, found a donor for that. It's been a tough time for the family. Earlier, we saw uh, the, the children, uh, the other remaining children of the couple walk out of court, very somber very upset, visibly distraught by it. And of course, I also had the opportunity of seeing the prosecutor who told me that this has been an interesting case, the first of its kind, a landmark ruling, and also trying to send a strong message to uh, many people who are considering this, to set an example that this won't be tolerated within this jurisdiction. And more importantly, he stated that the judge was very good and that the judge uh, did, outdid what they were expecting, meaning that those sentences were harsher than the prosecution imagined. So a sad day for some, but also a landmark day in British legal history. Just like to know if they can appeal this ruling and will they be eligible for parole, say maybe in a few months or a year? So as I mentioned, there's of course still an uh, opportunity to appeal. How that would go, of course, follows a separate process. However, uh, within the UK legal system, once you have been sentenced, typically if you are well behaved as a, as, as a prisoner, you do get half of that taken. But in this case, again, uh, you know, going back to the judge's uh, harshness, if you like, um, they have been told that they have to serve two thirds. So particularly in the case of Mr. Uh, Ikwere Madu, Senator Ikwere Madu, that is, he will be serving six years. That's not the conventional uh, route uh, that happens under the UK justice system. It typically, uh, you serve half of your sentence, but he's been made to serve half. The judge was also very clear that they will be eligible for parole after those years have been served, of which they will be uh, living under very strict rules, possibly may not be able to leave the country, may have to be on electronic tagging of the sort, but that won't, the, the details of that won't come to light till they serve those hefty sentences that they've been uh, handed with. Uh, they're said to have left from here to Belmarsh Prison. By the way, I'll just give you some background on what Belmarsh Prison is like. It is a high security prison, usually uh, populated by terrorists, murderers, um, and very, very uh, high uh, dangerous kinds of criminals. And so uh, there is an appeal in the process for uh, Senator Peramadi to be moved away from that. The doctor, this medical middleman, uh, uh, will, of course, have his license immediately revoked as a doctor. It also came to light during that court case, uh, that court hearing, rather, that he has done this before 
uh, he has managed to procure a kidney for himself, which is why uh, his involvement and his culpability has been the highest in all of this. And he, of course, was handed with the highest sentence out of the trio. Well, that is very interesting news. Was not aware of that. Um, Lakbe, any word on uh, what will become of the or, or, or organ donee, uh, the, uh, the, the individual who uh, came into the UK and is part of this case? Any, I think his name is David. Any, any word on what's going to happen to him? And also, uh, I know it's still early times, but uh, any uh, response from the Nigerian government within uh, the UK well, as you can imagine, it's just breaking. There were a number mm -hmm. of delegates here um, who have now moved on. Um, but in terms of your uh, second question, which was particularly about what is going to be of uh, David Wamini, uh, who initially wasn't named, but now we've discovered that he's actually 23 years old. He is said to be living in a sole existence, fearful of his life, cannot return to Nigeria. Uh, his account was very much a huge part of this. Um, in the sense that we were told that his dad back in Nigeria was also pressured to drop in the case by uh, by some of Ekwere Madu's uh, supporters and followers. And, and so for that reason, he's very fearful for his life and his family's life. His whereabouts are, of course, unknown to protect him, but we understand that he is living um, in a very much protected environment. Um, and, and I don't imagine that he would come to light or resurface anytime just yet. And talking about their daughter, Sonia, like you mentioned earlier, you said she hasn't yet found a donor. So I'm wondering if this will perhaps stir up more discussion on the slow pace and bottlenecks, you know, experienced within the NHS. Well, in terms of uh, Sonia, uh, her fate is still unknown. She still remains on the donor list, uh, somebody that's effectively dying. How this will affect her is still unknown. I actually met her boyfriend and her best friend earlier who were very distraught by the outcome and are saying that they do not know what this will do to her, if it will break her, if it will make her situation worse. However, uh, she is still a registered under the NHS and looking for a donor. In fact, just a few months ago, she still did a public plea for help. Um, and now that, you know, her primary caregivers have been taken away from her, her future is uncertain. And Lafay, I know you touched on this earlier, but uh, you said that they were being moved to a certain prison. Any word, is it the same prison as Mrs. Ekwere Madu? Will she be going to a different location? Well, certainly. Of course, as you can imagine, there are very few female prisons, and she is not going to be going to Belmarsh, as that is a male prison. We only have right. the details of where Mr. Ekwere Madu will be heading to, but that is Belmarsh prison. Thank you so much for giving us update on what's happening over there. We do appreciate it.